chicken with some roasted fall root vegetables. And so today I'm going to make some chicken soup stock out of that and then later I'll turn it into a soup. So I've got the carcass of my chicken. It was a pretty large chicken, so I broke it into a few pieces, the bones. I'm just gonna throw that in there. And then I'm gonna throw in some aromatics, they call them. Got a couple of carrots that I have in the fridge. I'm not gonna peel them, I washed them. That's all you need to do because this is gonna come out of the stock before I make the soup. So there's no need to take the time to peel them. And then I've got some celery from the refrigerator. When I get this home from the grocery store, I always wash it and cut off the root end and just store it in the refrigerator so it's always ready to go for me. Now when I'm making soups and stocks, I want to include the part that has the great leaves. So that's actually what I'm going to go for here, is the leaves. And I'll save this later for snacking or other soup or whatever. Okay, and then I've got one small onion. This is a Spanish onion. You don't have to use this. This is just what I had laying around the kitchen. So I'm just going to have it because, again, this is going to come get fished out of the soup before I, or the stock before I make the soup. And so I'm just going to throw that in. I've got about a half teaspoon of whole peppers. Corns. I've got a few sprigs of fresh thyme. I've got a couple of bay leaves. And then I'm just going to throw in a couple of garlics, of, a couple of cloves of whole garlic. Again, no need to chop it up. This is all just for aromatic purposes. So you probably could even leave it in with the skins on. But I like to take the skin off because it gets the garlic flavor releasing faster. And then I'm going to fill this up with some water and put it on the stove and let it cook for hours, literally hours. And then I'll strain it. So here's our beautiful chicken stock simmering away. So now that the chicken stock is fully cooked, I'm letting it cool a bit on the stove top and I'm going to make some delicious cream of broccoli and cauliflower soup. I've got six strips of bacon, which I've diced up, about a half a pound. I've got a quarter of that large onion from earlier. I have a couple carrots diced up in pretty big chunks, some parsley, and then I've got my cauliflower and broccoli. This part's going to go into the soup toward the end, so it'll stay a little firm. This part's going to go in in the beginning and get creamed into the soup. And then I have some fresh garlic. I just rough chopped it because it's going to all get pureed. I've got some butter and then some fresh nutmeg. I find any time you're making anything that's a cream sauce or greens, that little bit of nutmeg will really lift the flavor. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the stove and get this beautiful bacon frying. So I'm going to saute this bacon right in the soup pot. Typically, you don't find bacon in these kind of cream soups, but I like the bacon for two reasons. Number one, I'm going to use the bacon drippings as part of the fat to create my roux. And number two, I will take the bacon out where it's nice and crisp, set it aside, and we'll use it as garnish for the top of the soup. So I'm just going to let that get rendering and be back in a minute. You can see our roux is turning out beautifully. You can make a roux without too much trouble. Just usually an equal amount of fat and flour. So now we're going to add the rest of our chicken stock and let it cook until these vegetables are tender enough to go into the blender. 
Now I'm going to add a cup of heavy cream and stir that in. I'm going to let that all come together. The vegetables are almost done. And then this is going to go into the blender and totally puree these vegetables. And then we'll come back to this. So as you can see, the chicken stock and cream has cooked down considerably. It's less than half of what it was. It was up to there. And it's gotten thicker, not as thick as we want it, but right now I turned it off. I'm going to let this cool a bit, and then I'm going to put this in the blender, blend it till it's smooth, and strain it, and this will actually be the base for our soup. Make sure you let this cool before you blend it. You don't want to accidentally get splattered. You could also use an immersion blender right here in the pot, but again, let it cool off a bit, just in case there's a splatter. For now, I'm going to blend it up for a good bit. I want it to be completely smooth, and then I'm going to strain it back into the pot and finish the soup. My daughter and I love cream of broccoli soup, and we get it any chance we have. But one of our complaints, both of us, is that this is what it looks like. They've taken all of the broccoli and blended it into the soup. Well, that's not what we're going to do. We only used less than half the broccoli. Oops. So now, I'm going to push this through the strainer and cook the pieces of vegetables in our base. We'll be adding a little more chicken stock. We'll be adding a little more cream, some butter to finish it off, and black pepper and nutmeg. Right now, we have not added any salt to this soup. And I would eat it just like it is, but most people want a little bit of salt, so we will add a little bit of salt. Not too much, because we are going to sprinkle some beautiful shredded Parmesan on it at the end. So you can see, there's no pieces of broccoli or cauliflower left, just that little bit of puree. All right. Time to add the vegetables. So I'm going to add our carrots because they take the longest to cook. I'm also going to add the rest of the chicken stock. Because if we just cook the carrots straight in that base, by the time the carrots and broccoli and cauliflower are done, we would have no soup left. So we're going to go ahead and let this cook till the carrots are almost done, and then we will add the broccoli and the cauliflower. So as you can see, it's gotten much thinner. We will put a little more cream in at the end, as well as some butter. But right now, I'm going to put in some pepper and some nutmeg. And when you're doing a soup like this, real nutmeg, fresh nutmeg, is legit. There is no substitution for the nutmeg in here and the fresh nutmeg has a much brighter, more intense flavor. Yes, that was me dropping the nutmeg on the floor. As you can see, I didn't put too much in. We can always add a little more. I'm gonna give it a good pinch of pepper, mix that in, and then allow the carrots to cook. So as you can see, the soup has cooked down quite a bit, and I added another half cup of heavy cream. I'm going to let this simmer until the vegetables are tender but not mushy, and it will be ready to eat.